Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be talking about fuel filters on 2.0T engines. Okay, so here we have our fuel filter we're gonna be replacing on our Mark 6 GTI. Uh, this filter is pretty much the same on most two liter turbo engines from Volkswagen and Audi uh, for the MK5, MK6 platforms. Uh, this particular one, there was an update on this particular fuel filter. Uh, this does have a pressure regulator inside of it. The earlier revision was a 6.4 bar. This one is a 6.6 .6 bar. Uh, we'll have links to the most current version in the description where you can check that out. But you will want to make sure you get the most current version. We've heard of some people, and, and this is probably more likely if you have upgraded fuel systems in your vehicle, that uh, they have some, if you're having fueling issues because of your car is upgraded either maybe you upgrade to a KO4 or something like that, uh, that you may have some fueling concerns if you have the earlier run. So uh, this is something that I recommend replacing if you're either having that concern or on the normal interval, which uh, would have been either 40K, and I think at some point VW did change it to an extended interval at a later one, either 50 or 60,000 miles. They did have some changes somewhere along the way uh, on TSI engines. This is for FSI and TSI, uh, but this would be basically the same for replacing on VW and Audi engines for the most part, a similar setup as far as location as well as how to replace it as well. So with that said, let's get into installing our fuel filter. Okay, so here we are on the passenger rear of the vehicle. This is uh, gonna be in front of the rear wheel, uh, right at the rear of the rocker right here. This is where we are. So uh, we are gonna be looking at taking our lines off, which are gonna be located here, here, and here. Now, it's important to note that uh, there is pressure in your fuel system. Now, this car hasn't ran in a while, so there's not likely to be any pressure in this system, but when you release these, you're actually probably gonna get some spray coming out of this. So um, what I would suggest is to just you can either use your finger to push, but basically we're, just so we can, you can see, we're gonna be using a pick and you can push right on this right here. Now you need to get these, these clips in so you can remove these. So what oftentimes will happen is people have a tough time getting them in and so they'll end up breaking them, which you do not wanna break these lines. If you break this line, you have to replace all three of these lines all the way from here, all the way to the front of the vehicle. And if you replace these, you have to replace it from here up to the top of the tank of the fuel pump. So you may have to drop a tank to get those in or out. So uh, this is important. Don't just start, uh, just start pushing and, and yanking on these things, hoping that you're gonna get it off. So make sure you push them properly. And oftentimes what you wanna do is maybe push forward into the connector and then, and then as you're depressing kind of that connection and then you can kind of pull back is usually the best trick. Now, this pick may not work best. A flathead screwdriver actually might be a better fit. So we have our small flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna push in, there you go. You can see it depressed pretty easily there. And that one's released, we got a little bit of a drip there. And that one's coming from a tank. Same deal with this one. Now, as you can see with that one, kind of took some working back and forth. And what I did is kind of push in the center. I pulled this back and forth like this. And you, you'll see kind of some dirt and debris fall out of there a little bit. And then I also pushed on the outer edges with the flathead to get this thing released. Now, that's off now. But again, if you're not careful and you don't work that thing back and forth like that, you could end up breaking this end off, which you're gonna regret. So. Now we got these two lines off. We're gonna get a little bit of a drip and then we'll get to this other side here. Now on this side, this is where people tend to have the problem because the connector is upside down. So on these, you could push straight from the bottom up and actually on this side, it's reversed. So you can put, you have to push down from the top. Now, if you can use your fingers to get in there, then, then you would just get underneath and push down. Now, now, depending on probably if you have a lot of dirt and debris and maybe how big your hands are probably plays a part here. If you have super big hands, you may not have a tough time getting your hands in there. Now I'm gonna put this out of the way for you so you can take a closer look here. 
And what we're gonna do is show you, we have two different pick options that we're gonna try here. And I'm gonna start with this hook one and I'll link to our picks in the description where you can check that out. But what you can do is use this hook to go over top and then pull it down on that connector. Just make sure you have it actually in place where you need to be pushing on before you go crazy. So that was, I can feel that's in place pretty good. And we're off there. So as you can see, that actually worked pretty well. And this, this screw is a little bit stripped, so we're just gonna replace it when we have around, which I should have a Torx that can fit this, but we'll link to this screw in the description where you can check that out, depending on how, how yours is, you may or may not need it. Now we can get our fuel filter out here and we should be able to just slide it. towards the rear of the vehicle. And there we go out. And we can slide this back in. This nub here has kind of an orientation up top that goes up here. That was kind of what I was hung up on sliding back this way. So you, you have to kind of pull this down and bend it out of the way to slide it back this direction. So I would expect it to go in a little easier and then you can kind of slide that in place. And we got one connection, the other connection. Now I also would make sure in our circumstance here, this connection, it's hung up that it's pushed shut. So it looks like we have to get a pick in there and just pop this tab back out. Which isn't surprising because it didn't open very easily. So I, don't, I wouldn't expect it to just return to closed. And there we go, give it a pull, make sure all those are on. And just keep in mind whenever you, if you wanna test this, you don't have to start your car, you can just cycle the ignition to the on position. It should prime your fuel pump when you first uh, start your car. And here's another screw we had around for this. Let us thread this guy in. And we're all set there. Make sure we put our brake line hooked back in place. Make sure nothing happens to it. And I would just give it another tug real quick. Make sure everything's good before you get finish up here. And we're all set. Thanks so much for watching our video on how to replace a fuel filter on a Mark 6 GTI. Again, this filter specifically does apply to most 2.0 T engines with a few models that actually don't have a serviceable filter being the exception. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you more like it.